Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, aka Ivy Crazy, and this is How to Be Successful in FPV Part 6, The Advanced Systems. Okay, maybe you're ready to get into a more advanced system. You've got a lot to choose from. On-screen displays, autopilot, antenna trackers, diversity systems, long-range radio systems, and the list goes on. The development of these advanced systems specifically for FPV is literally endless. You can add all kinds of stuff to that airplane. But again, that's not necessary. These are add-ons. So what add-ons do you want? Well, it depends on what you want. One of the first one of the first things I recommend adding on if you're going to start making the system more complex is an on-screen display. On-screen display should utilize a GPS. The great thing about an on-screen display with a GPS is it tells you where home is. Why is that important? Because you're going to find the world is a very different place when you're up 30 feet in the air. It's going to be very hard to locate where you were standing with poor resolution video such as comes out of these CCD cameras we fly with. So the other nice thing about the heads-up display is it tells you your battery voltage. Sometimes some even have a current sensor in them to tell you how much battery you've consumed so you know about how much battery life you have, know when to come back, how far away you are, where you're located. They do all kinds of things and some even incorporate an antenna tracker. An antenna tracker that takes your antenna and points it at your airplane as you fly. However, if you're a beginner, Stay out of the antenna tracker for now. Start simple, start adding systems. Add the on-screen display, get used to that, and then add the antenna tracker. Me personally, I don't fly an antenna tracker because I don't need one. It's just an added level of complexity that I personally don't care for. However, if you like to be able to fly long range in any direction, the antenna tracker might be the thing for you. Again, add it after you have a little bit of experience. Another upgrade for your video piloting system might be an LRS, or Long Range Radio System. Typically, they're a small box like this mounted to the back of your, your existing radio. The great thing about LRS is it just bolts right to the back of your existing radio and allows you to travel very, very long distances without worrying about control. That does not mean your control is limitless, it's just much further than it was with the old 72 megahertz or 35 megahertz system. Is this an advanced option? Well, kind of. The problem with LRS is they, they're so powerful they can walk on your video and disturb it. So you might need to find a way to shield your receiver antenna and this antenna because this might walk all over your video system. So if I'm standing here flying, this is screaming right at that system. So other than having interference with your video, there's no defect to going with the LRS systems other than maybe it's cost. Well, what other systems are there out there? What other systems can I, can I choose? Well, there's also diversity. What's diversity? See, well, I can have two antennas pointed in different directions, one over there, one over here, and my diversity system will automatically select the antenna with the strongest video feed. Now, the problem with diversity systems is sometimes they can erratically switch, but the advantage is you have increased flight volume. What do you mean? Because this antenna is looking over here, and this antenna is looking over here, and the diversity system is automatically listening to both. Now you're gonna need a second receiver with diversity. So you need two receivers, plug them in, plug your diversity in, and you're ready to go. The diversity does the rest. I do not recommend a diversity for a beginner. Start out simple, add it on, just like the antenna tracker. However, if you have an antenna tracker, do not get diversity, you do not need both. That is an unnecessary level of complexity that trust me, you don't want. The last system out there is the autopilot system. Remember, autopilot is not FPV. Let me remind you of this, autopilot is not FPV. Autopilot, typically return to home or return to launch, allows you to flip a switch on your radio and your airplane will go through to its preset home position, wherever you locked it in, it'll automatically make your turn and come back. Sounds great, doesn't it? It's not so great. Here's why. Let's say you're low to the ground, flying very, very low, and you need that signal, you need that airplane to come back. It doesn't know that there might be a building or a tree in the way, it's just gonna come fly right back. 
And if there's a tree, it's going to hit it. If there's a building, it's going to hit it. There's also another problem. The autopilot system isn't a pilot. So it might roll the airplane over and crash it. It's very easy for that to do. Here's the other thing. Did it lock on home right? I've seen several posts where people went, I'm ready to fly. The airplane goes out, the autopilot engages, and it flies away. More wrecks are caused by return to home than are actually saved by return to home. And this is typically from people not setting them up properly. If you're going to use return to home, please take the time and set it up properly or you will lose your airplane. Adding return to home to an unreliable system does not make it any more reliable. Make your system reliable first, then add return to home. That is an advanced pilot's option. If you are new and you're putting return to home on your airplane, there is a high probability you will lose that airplane. This has been an IB Crazy tutorial. Keep your wings in the sky.